Welcome to Rogers TV and Service Georgina. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and we have a series of shows planned that will go over various departments, programs, and services offered by the town. And it's hoped during the discussions of these uh, issues that you'll gain insight into the operations of the town. Now, on today's show, we're going to be talking about two different departments roads and recreation. And joining me for our, my first segment is our Acting uh, Director of Operations Infrastructure, John Armstrong. Welcome, John. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, we're into the winter season right now, so I know the biggest concern that, that residents have is the safety on the streets and, and accessing uh, the sidewalks. What's our plan for, for major uh, snow removal and day-to-day -day snow operations? Well, we certainly are well prepared for winter operations. Uh, it's an ongoing Throughout the year, right, we do uh, monitor. Say, oh, geez, it's January. Let's, let's, no, that's yeah. right. We we certainly uh, assess uh, what we have done and how we're going to proceed to provide the service. Uh, as far as what we have, uh, we have approximately 670 lane kilometers of roads that we have to maintain okay. uh, within the municipality, and we are set up to do that. So, so. when it comes to patrolling, so yes. on a on a winter day, are there patrols out there on the on the roads? Yes, we uh, patrol the roads three times a day, seven days a week, throughout the winter months. And uh, sidewalks are also patrolled uh, every day throughout the winter months. So do we go on every road when we patrol, or how do we determine which roads to, to patrol and how to, to do that? Because certainly you couldn't drive every road. No, that, that's a very good question. Um, by regulation, we're required to select roads that are representative of all the other roads within the municipality. So Obviously, we see hard surface roads, we would patrol gravel roads? That's correct. We, there is uh, pavement, surface treated and gravel roads. They all can react differently with uh, weather conditions and winds uh, play a role as well. So we have to be considerate of what the weather conditions are for the day, which direction the wind's blowing, blowing. to ensure that we're covering for all of the particular... Yeah. And we know that it can be different what's happening in Keswick and as opposed to what's happening out on Duclos Point or, or in Sutton because sometimes before the, the lake freezes, we get those streamers coming across and you can have a, a major snowfall happening in one part of town and clear skies in, in another part. That's absolutely correct. We, um, it, we look at it as three different weather patterns from yeah. South Keswick to the Sutton area up towards the Pefferla area. And so we do monitor that. And part of the monitoring program that we have, we have a, a service from a weather uh, provider and we get uh, a number of updates on weather conditions in two different areas specific to Georgina, one in the Keswick area and one from the Sutton area so that we can monitor what it can be is very, very oh, different to very what's different, happening. Yes. So when it comes to the actual plowing and, and salting and sanding, maybe describe what the plows have on them, what the product is, and we mm -hmm. can have a little bit of discussion on, sure. on that. The, uh, we have 13 uh, dump trucks that people would recognize as being plow trucks. Uh, and of the 13, 10 are municipally owned, three are contracted. They, uh, they are, we refer to as combination units, they plow and provide uh, the sand and salt mix mm -hmm. that we spread. So they can do both operations at one time if required. Uh, one unique component we have on our plow trucks is something called a, uh, an underbody plow. Now not all trucks are so equipped with that now. What does that do then? It's, uh, it's a, we're one of the fewer municipalities that have it and we are going to incorporate the system on all of our trucks ultimately, but it is a, a, a third plow. Most people recognize that there's a front plow a and a plow. wing plow, yep. but then under the body between the axles there's uh, another uh, plow that can scrape even more of the snow off of the roadway, which in, from our perspective, as much material or snow that we can get off the road um, the less material we require to prevent it from icing up. Icing up. So what about the product that we do spread? And that's, that's done um, by the trucks and stuff while they're, while they're plowing. So yes, what, right. uh, what is the, the ratio and what do we spread? Well, we have a ratio of 70% uh, <clears throat> sand and 30% of a product called Thaw Rocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Thaw Rocks is uh, it's an encapsulated uh, sodium chloride, which is encapsulated by an agricultural byproduct or a byproduct of a sugar or you might say a carbohydrate okay. that um, it um, increases the, uh, the uh, de-icing capability of the salt. It's a stickier component so it 
will not it, bounce. So it adheres. It you adheres you, you more see so that. I mean, it. remember the old plows, you'd be driving near a plow truck and you could hear it pinging off of uh, your vehicle. So obviously right. it's, it's bouncing off of uh, the right. road. So it reduces the bounce. It's also an anti corrosion product. So it reduces corrosion. It doesn't eliminate it, but yeah. it reduces corrosion. By using this mix and this, the thaw rocks, the thaw rocks also works at a much colder temperature. Oh, okay. Because there's times product. that you can only sand and there's times that you should salt. And, and what's the difference there? What? Uh, well, with uh, normal rock salt, you'd be uh, provide, uh, applying that, and it's effective down to about minus 8 degrees Celsius. With thaw rocks, it's effective down to, very effective down to minus 14, 15. Wow. But can still produce deicing capability down to minus into the 20s. Wow. So it is a very effective, particularly in our area, that um, we have a lot of free saw cycles. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, very effective. A huge advantage, or there are a number of advantages with using uh, uh, the mixed material right. that we're using and with the thaw rocks. So do we use, uh, maybe tell us some of the advantages. I think I remember mm -hmm. that you tell me before that we can use less material. So yes. using less is, is more cost efficient. Um, so maybe tell me what, uh, what the... Yes, historically, uh, prior to using this mix and the material thaw rocks uh, into the mix, uh, the municipality would spread up to 14 to 15,000 tons of material over a typical winter season. Right, that's a lot. Which is a lot of material over our six, or 330 center line roads or the, the double, yeah, when you double it up. Line. The, um, uh, with this material, we are spreading as low as 200 uh, kilograms per two lane kilometer compared to a 600 kilograms wow, that we good. would have been spreading before. It's between 200 and 300 that we would spread with this material, but the end result is that we've reduced our application of material uh, to about half, between six and 7,000 tons per year. Now, does it cost more than, than the normal uh, rock salt? or The thaw rocks itself is about 10% more than rock salt. However, it's but far using more far, far more effective, and it's and you're using less. So overall, it's it's a cost savings. To it's a, the cost savings is nominal with the material, but the significant cost saving is in the labor and right. uh, equipment costs, as well as our ability to um, the deadheading. For example, previously, a uh, a truck on its route would go out and would take two and a half loads of material to. Uh, to do it to treat their roads right. within their area and now they are coming back with material with one load wow so, so they don't have to keep coming back so that's they can right. get the, the roots done done faster yes and so that, we reduce the deadheading so. that's good that yeah. leads me to my next question because often residents will will ask me how come my road seems to be the last road to uh, plowed I, I get up at six in the morning and i need to get to to work and my road's not plowed so how do we set priorities for what roads get done when and I guess we have to get Mother Nature to give us the snow at the right time too, because it really does depend on when the, the snow happens. It's, it's very dependent on when the uh, weather event. <laughs> if hits the weather us. event happens, boom, right in the middle of rush hour, yes. it's very different than if it happens at two in the morning. That's for correct. example. And we often get uh, a winter event, whether it be two millimeters or or ten millimeters, yeah. or so, um, that it would. Uh, you know, if it hits at four in the morning, obviously it takes us some time to mobilize and to get out and start treating the roads. The, um, um, if it's a sanding operation, uh, primaries, hills, primary roads, hills, and curves, mm -hmm. dangerous areas are certainly treated uh, initially, and then all of the other roads. So if you're on a, a secondary or a local road or a court, right. you may not be getting the service at the same uh, time Same time frame, frame as, someone, as, like as somebody on Cowan Road, a primary right. road. For example, yeah. yes. The other issue is sidewalks. I often get uh, concerns from residents that the sidewalk, especially in front of the schools, haven't been uh, cleared. Um, you know, they're pushing strollers or walking their kids to, to, to school. Maybe tell us a bit about how uh, the priorities are set for, uh, for the sidewalks. We, uh, we do patrol the sidewalks, as I indicated, and our patrols are every day, and we start very early in the morning to do the patrols. Um, and if the patrol identifies that there are, if it's a significant issue and it's a full call out, they would contact a supervisor who would certainly initiate the call out for all equipment. Typically, we would start by 3.30 or 4 in the morning. Um, early. 
Right, yeah. really, it's, a, it's an eight-hour... <laughs> that's hour. all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's correct. Um, and the, uh, it typically takes us about eight hours on a typical event. Right. Now, if you get a foot and a half of snow, it's going to take a lot longer, obviously. Mm -hmm. But on a typical event, it would take us about eight hours to treat all of the sidewalks. The, uh, the routes are... The sidewalk machines are not very fast moving. No. Obviously. Uh, I understand they can't back up either, you were telling uh, me. A number of them cannot back up because, well, they're, they, they, they're split they're in the middle, split, they're articulating, yeah. we call yeah. they're articulating. Very difficult to back up, so they do have to move forward. The, um, so anyway, we would, uh, as far as the routing is concerned, the, when they're going through their routes, they will catch all of the primary sidewalks as they're going to the, we'll say, the furthest away from the yard right. for their route and then work their way forward. They, very difficult for them to jump from, from location to, school. to location. From school to So they can't say, okay, let's do it in front of this school, now we're going to yeah. run and, and do this school. In front of that school, well, why not all the connecting links right. to that school? Yeah, you've done the school, but you haven't that's done right. it. Yeah. That's right. But we're very well within all of the minimum uh, requirements. So what we would ask folks to do, I mean, be aware of the fact that it's not going to be summer conditions. No. Uh, proper footwear is extremely important. It's extremely important, important <laughs> and just being cautious. That's right. So what else can people do to uh, to help uh, the, the town when it comes to the snow removal? I think, uh, you know, with the sidewalks, that's a very good question. The sidewalks, um, and then some of the new subdivisions that where the sidewalks are put in and certainly when they're designing subdivisions uh, you want to get all the amenities within that boulevard area and what we have find, are finding that folks are in parking their cars in their driveway which is great that's a great start they're, to yeah. help us with the right, operations to have the, the cars off the road to um, not have their cars overhanging the sidewalk if an operator is coming along and they see that a car is even slightly or very close to overhanging the sidewalk that operator for the sidewalk plow will have to pull out prior to that driveway at the, the, the previous house driveway. Yeah, the driveway before. To get around because they cannot back up. Right. And if they did plow there, they'd just leave a great mound of snow wow. uh, right in the middle. So it's a simple thing to help us. So there's some communities like downtown Toronto, you're responsible for clearing right. the sidewalk. Whereas we, we do it here. Where we do it. And so. I know some people do assist us and in, in, in clear yes. their sidewalk. Yeah. So that's but great. We, we still will go through and do it. Right. Now, um, what can people do to, um, if they see a problem, who should they call and, and what should they do? Just call the town at any time, uh, whether it's through normal work hours, Monday to Friday, or after hours, it's the same telephone number that Great. they can call. Great, and they can just call if it's the after hours, they need to leave the, the message, follow the prompts. It's, it's, if I, I I've got to wrap up. We've oh. run out of time. We have to have you come back. But uh, this has been uh, Service Georgina here on Rogers TV. I've had uh, uh, John Armstrong talking about roads. Join me at the, after the break, and I'll have uh, Patty White from Recreation. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to Rogers TV and Service Georgina. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk. And joining me now is uh, Patty White, Manager of Recreation Services. Welcome, Patty. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. Well, we're changing gears from roads. We talked with uh, the first segment to, uh, to recreation. So let's talk a little bit about some of the programs we offer. We're in the middle of our, our winter season. What's, uh, what's happening at, uh, at the Rock? Well, I'm thankful for John's team that safely has uh, <laughs> plowed the way and got us now. We can go and have some real fun. Um, at the Rock, uh, we have an exciting season. Um, and. Uh, uh, definitely it's it's something for everyone um, we range from our, our outdoor ice skating rink um, to the toboggan hill um, to our tubing lanes or we have our train park and our, of course our beautiful chalet to keep warm oh, and nice and yeah, some hot get some cozy yeah and, and the nice thing is uh, we're not reliant on on mother nature um, with the snow if there isn't snow and the way the weather's uh, been going this yes. winter in and previous winters you have a day of rain and, and mild temperatures and then you get right back into the deep freeze but we're able to make snow at, uh, at we the do. rock. Yeah we definitely have the snow making capabilities um, and all of the water is not coming from municipal water it comes from the the uh, ponds which is also fed into the Lake Simcoe so that's great so we do have that capability so we just need to have the right um, humidity and the temperature and we can make our own snow and have our so it may be green on your lawn mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's be beautiful at the rock. And yeah. the nice thing is on uh, the town website on the Rock website, there's a webcam. So if you want to see what's currently happening at uh, at the Rock, uh, is there lineups? Is the uh, the rink open? What's happening at the Toboggan Hill? 
you can see that. Yeah, definitely. We have the webcam, and also the website is a great tool for, and you can also, um, there's updates on there as well. About um, things, so if something's closed or stuff. Rock.ca is the spot to go. And when in doubt, if you want to just call the Rock, um, our ticket office staff are friendly and courteous, and they'll be able to assist you. Now, what are some of the special events that we have at uh, at the Rock during the winter season? Especially, I think we have some things in, uh, in March. We do. Um, of course, March break. Uh, this uh, the Rock is the spot, best spot to have a staycation. Yes. Um, if you're not leaving Georgina, um, we still have some great opportunities. There's some theme days, so we get a little creative of having like a mustache day or a superhero day, so you can come out and um, and bring and bring your inner inner child out <laughs> and have some fun. And uh, definitely one of our um, main um, events is the cardboard toboggan race. And that's always a lot of fun. The kids yes. and, and adults make the, the toboggans and it, they get very creative. And they do. Yeah. And I think even in, within the family, they oh, get competitive. competitive. Yeah. Exactly. I think the fathers versus the children, the children and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. And then we've done uh, the puddle jump as well. That's sort of our final closing. Again, these are all weather dependent because sometimes March we can have quite warm weather and we do lose uh, the snow at that point. But um, maybe tell a bit about the puddle jump. In. Yeah, sure. So um, the puddle jump is is our end of the season. Um, pretty much as the snow is starting to go, we basically make a pond um, on the hill. So it's a big puddle and you can come down on the tube and basically skim across the water. So some it's getting you back used to skim. the... Yeah. <laughs> or kaplunk. <laughs> Coming down in skis and they'll ski right across. Yes. Um, some of the, the tubes will come and they just they sink and it's 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 a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of interesting costumes. Uh, yes. As well for the public. Each jump. year um, there's a new flavor that is being added to it as uh, people get really invested into the whole event. Yes. Um, but definitely you can come down if you're if you're not a skier or snowboarder you can use a tube and you can come through and skim across or or go uh, get a little wet. So yeah. be prepared. Um, bring maybe an extra pair of clothes. <laughs> if you, yeah. Exactly. Now, during March break, what sort of camps do we have, both at the Rock and, and at our other facilities? Yes, we do have a Rock Day camp. Um, it, it's, it's one day of the, the holiday, um, but we also have at Georgina Gym, um, we have camps there as well. So it's more of a variety camp. Um, so if you're not into the outdoor activities, then there's indoor sports and, and um, crafts, arts and crafts, and all of those t types of things. Mm -hmm. And it's for all ages, like from the four years old, um, you know, up to you, typically it's 12 yeah, or 13. Not every parent is able to take that March break right. off to be with their kids, and it's good to have uh, the town. We often. definitely will keep them active <laughs> and engaged. Now at The Rock, we identify ourselves, and you gave me the, the phrase, York Region's Adventure Headquarters. So what activities do we have besides uh, the, the winter activities at The Rock? Why are we the adventure headquarters? We definitely are an all-year facility. Um, so as we start to flip into our spring setting, um, we have a beautiful challenge course. Um, it's got two tiers, so, um, and then we also have a zip line, which has two um, lines on it. We have a rock climbing wall. We ha even have low rope activities. So a lot of times you'll see um, school groups mm -hmm. on site and, and participating because we do a lot of team building and communication um, and it's also great for corporate groups as well. Right, exactly. So, yeah. um, there's the, the high ropes and the low ropes. It's funny, I was at an event recently and a gentleman saw a picture on one of our posters of the, uh, the zip line. He goes, where is that? And I said, the rock. And he, he had never been aware of it. So I know there's a lot of people out in the community that think that the rock is simply just the hill, but there's the soccer pitches, the baseball diamonds, yeah. tennis uh, courts. We also have the bike park. That's um, right. So we have a pump track and we have a dirt um, jump track. Um, so there's little elements within the, within the gated um, uh, bike park area. Right. Um, and on top of that, we also have um, bike trails. So it's called the North Shore Trails. So there's different, um, and then there's features within the trails. So um, you have some, you know, obstacles, ex exciting. Yeah, definitely um, exhilarating. And, and of course, if you're, you're not that comfortable on the bicycle, you, there's the option of, of going around the element. You don't have to participate in. Yeah, so it's definitely um, challenge by choice. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Now, you mentioned a little bit about uh, school groups coming, but uh, maybe expand a bit about the rental of the facility and, and how that can be done either um, corporately or by, uh, you know, a, a single individual. Yeah. Um, so 
for a single individual, we run programs. So we have a Rope and Rocks program. Um, so it's a six week program or we have a, a, a drop in. So if right. you um, don't know what you're going to wake up and do that day, but if we have um, a scheduled drop in um, Saturday uh, between certain times, you can come in and join all of the elements um, at the challenge course. Um, we also do a lot of special events. So you can contact the Rock um, and the staff will be able to walk you through um, because we have a lot of special events um, not only um, like our Canada Day is right. as, is, our uh, is our biggest and we yep. celebrate um, but even if you had a corporate um, event that you wanted to bring we definitely can uh, um, address all of your needs there what if you um, had a, uh, your child's birthday party definitely um, we have the uh, ropes and rocks and then even through um, the winter season we do yeah, tubing you, birthday parties as well because I know I, I saw um, uh, a table at the, the Rock reserved for a group. So yes. if you're having a, a birthday party, you can book those. Those tables go quick and, and are very popular. So if you're having your birthday party at the Rock, what do people normally do? Like a couple hours tubing and then do they? Uh, it's a two hour um, tubing birthday party. So basically you would just call, you can call the Rock or you can call here to the customer service hub um, and then they would be able to process your booking. Um, typically there's usually about 10 to 20 um, people that are in a birthday party. Um, so that would include your lift ticket pass and those types of things as well as a reserve table. And then you also, of course, um, have some food and, and drinks for and your drinks. guests. Oh, that's yeah. good. And again, the, the facility includes um, the splash pad, the, the soccer pitches, the baseball diamonds. Um, our, our user groups use those, but again, if, if uh, a tournament is wanting to be uh, held, uh, there's the rental opportunity there. Definitely. And then um, just contact the community service hub here, and they'll be able to walk you through the rental contract and uh, get everything in and make sure that you have an, a, a positive experience when you come here. We host a lot of um, baseball tournaments, soccer um, tournaments. I see all the time yeah. throughout the yeah. summer months. The other thing we host at the Rock Chalet is weddings. Yes, beautiful weddings. Yes, so there's, if somebody gay wants to host their wedding there, they can do can they do the entire uh, wedding there in terms of the ceremony as well or uh, yes you can um, I've even seen um, some unique features where um, they've expanded out of the 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 south end of the property and included the ceremony at the Pioneer Village That's right. and then and then hosted the reception over at the Rock Chalet. So um, the property is so so many opportunities that can be expanded um, and it just needs that. So our customer service representatives would be able we'll to be assist able to yeah, and, and give you some tidbits of what has worked in the past and, and moving well, forward. Yeah. And right. even um, to the point where you could also right here in council chambers you yes. have an opportunity of getting married, getting married and then you're using, and the, using the, the chalet facility. for the reception yep. now when it comes to other programming i know we've got uh, the spring registration maybe tell us a bit about uh, about that yeah spring registration opens on uh, march 5th um, and that also not only for the spring programs it's also for summer camps right. um, because a lot of parents need to have that extra time to plan out their summer i know it's it's in march um, but it, it comes might, very quickly. Well, and, and some of those camps get booked up. And, they do. And what are we adding? Some new camps? I think you told me there's a popular camp that's uh, coming well, back. Well, we have our popular by um, back by popular demand is our firefighting camp. Um, so we um, uh, work with the Georgina firefighters, um, and they they this is now going to be our um, third year of hosting it. Um, but but we do have some new ones. So there's a new um, Pioneer Village. Um, oh, camp. I know that's always been popular at, at the village, but yeah. so what's the what's the new twist on it? It's it's more of the life um, aspects of, of okay. learning a little bit about the village, and then um, we have a great one if you're a baker out there. It's oh, called really? Sweet Adventures. Oh. So that's a new one. Sign uh, me up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and our, our, uh, we also have another one returning um, from last year, which was in newly introduced. It's called Hero Camp for the little guys. Oh, so really? for your four to five year olds at the link, we were hosting uh, Hero Camp. Oh, nice. So, but uh, if you got that sweet tooth and you want to get into mm, the kitchen and learn okay. how to bake, um, Sweet Adventures is a new one. Okay, and we also hold uh, camps at the, the theater as well. We do, yeah. We have a wide range. Um, so we have sports camps, so it could range from hockey, soccer, um, just sports of all sorts into of course our our staple um, camps which is our our rock camps right. so rock adventure rock adrenaline so i know one year i went around to a variety of the camps and it's amazing what we offer and and Definitely. And the kids are always having a, a great time. I think we should have an adult. Can we have adult uh, summer camps? I think, <laughs> I think we, so. should, we should do that. Now, um, speaking of adults, what programming do we have for uh, for our seniors? 
Oh, seniors, that um, if you have you ever heard of the Club 55? Yes, I have. <laughs> so we have um, three amazing clubs um, cl called Club 55s. One is located at the Pepperlow Lions Hall. Um, the other is the Sutton um, Seniors um, Center, and then also our, our larger uh, facility, which uh, their staff present at all times, is the Club 55 Keswick, which shares the space with the Stephen Lee Cox yeah. Theater. Yeah. So I, you had mentioned to me um, about leadership opportunities for um, for people within for students primarily, but maybe tell me a bit about uh, some of the leadership opportunities within the recreation department. A lot of our leadership. Um, so for our camps, we have the counselors in training and leaders in training. It's a great opportunity. But also, I just wanted to touch base on. Um, is the at our pool we have um, opportunities to become a lifeguard to become a water safety instructor so um, we actually have um, we're making it easier for people to um, get the certification oh, good because that um, looks great on a resume if you're going off to college or university or applying for other jobs because that that's that is a good we skill. will train you and you'll have a job with us yeah and so again, if you go off to, to post-secondary there's usually a recreation facility there that's looking for uh, yeah. for people too. So and the, the values that you learn within those certifications add so much to your resume yeah, as an individual. Great. So um, well, getting I'm going to have to cut you off. We okay. run out of time. We could sit here and talk all day. I know, but thank you, Patty, for for joining me. This has been uh, Rogers TV and Sarah Sargina. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk. Thank you for joining me here today. I hope you tune into our next shows. Thank you very much. It was good. Yeah, we could keep talking.